hi hi everyone how are you doing you are welcome back to yet another tutorial video like guys i don't know why i'm just so excited this morning like guys a lot is happening around every one of us not just me so if you have that you know, slightest opportunity to be excited please not hold back be excited as much as you can okay so and if you don't mind just join me to just be happy for no reason if just be happy for no reason you deserve it so guys that being said you're welcome back to yet another tutorial video guys i'm excited about this particular one in today's tutorial because we're going to be cutting and sewing the beautiful gorgeous cow neckline yes guys and best believe when i tell you that i've made this tutorial as beginner friendly as possible you can take that to the bank guys yeah please enjoy watching this video give this video a like subscribe if you haven't and then let's dive right into the tutorial <laughs> So here we have our basic bodice pattern ready which is from the shoulder to the half width length of the upper part of the dress and next I cut out our basic bodice pattern because this is what I'm going to be using for the draping aspect of the dress. So now here I have the basic bodice pattern so let's start with the draping immediately. So to start with the draping aspect of the dress I come to the center fold area just like so and then mark out a point which is about three quarter of an inch between each other so all these points i have been marked out here at three quarter of an inch between each other and for this point that you see me marking out here or that I've marked out here i used a uh, three quarter of an inch and i used just about five of the points because i want the draping to be a little bit minimal i don't want it to be too deep and i don't want it to be too small but in the case that you want yours to be too deep okay you can use more than this point that i have like you can see i have only just five points then coming over to the shoulder and the armhole area of the pattern i mark also 1.5 inches point between each other i have this as 1.5 inches all the way i have about uh, the same number that i have at the center fold remember the center fold i used to the quarter but here i'm using 1.5 as you can see i have it one two three four five on the shoulder and armhole area and also on the center fold i have also five of them and then i'm going to be connecting the two points together that's one from the center fold to the shoulder area and i connect just like so so the first one from the center fold is going to be connected to the first point at the shoulder area and i'm going to be doing that all the way to the five points together and here we have all our points connected from the center fold to the shoulder and armhole area so now i'm going to be slashing through this point and as you can see i'm going to be slashing from the center fold towards the shoulder area but i'm not going to be cutting through you can see that i left some points still holding it intact so this is what i'm going to be doing to the five lines throughout please do consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed up to this moment and please don't forget to give this video a huge like at the end of the day thank you so i have the slashing done now and you can see i opened it up and this is what i have so i'm going to be placing it on another pattern to give me the final pattern that i'm going to be using to cut out the fabric so i have it placed on another pattern paper just like so and then i arrange and i want to point out that the placing of the first pattern or the sec second pattern is dependent on how deep you want your draping to be at the end of the day so as you can see the distance from here to here is going to determine how deep your draping is going to be so for this one i do not want it too deep like i stated earlier i just want it minimal so the distance from here to here i'm not going to be using anything more than five to five and a half inches or even six inches at most but if you want it deeper like you can use even up to nine inches but for me i'm not going to be doing that so i place it to the point that from the first uh, cut out like from the first lashing up there can you see where i place the table to this new center fold of the pattern i have about five to five point five inches can you see that so i have about 5.5 inches from this point to the center fold area so that is what i'm going to be using just because i don't want it too deep so that is enough for me so i make sure i hold that in place at the 5.5 inches from the center fold and then i'm going to be using a paper tape to hold it down on the new pattern so i'm going to be holding everything down so that i do not have the new pattern moving um up and down on the second one so i have them held down just to have them in place and after i am done doing that the next thing i'll be doing is from this point i'm going to be connecting back to the pattern paper with a straight through just like so so you can see how the connection goes and then from the neck depth here you can see this was our neck depth and i rule outward to the center foot as well 
so here is it from the neck depth to the center fold area and for this space up here because this is a self edge folding allowance i'm going to be using just two inches for that if you want you can use less than that you can use more than that but i decided to use two inches for the self folding edge allowance and here i have those points connected together with a straight line and then at the edge on the other side i'm going to be connecting it back to the depth of the neckline once again for these two inches above it is just for the self folding edge allowance you can use a full interfacing if you do not want that so that's just basically it for that and then i proceed to cutting out all the patterns like so so just note exactly where i am cutting and at this place the two inches fold edge allowance i fold it in and then i continue the cutting like so and after that i open it up and this is what we have and see that at this point is exactly what i marked out without um folding it then and then at this point i notch this two fold edge allowance part i notch that part so that by the time i'm cutting the fabric i know exactly where to fold so this is the back pattern now that i'm cutting now so i just cut out the basic pattern for the back as well and i have both patterns ready so next i proceed to cutting of the fabric so this is the fabric i'll be using i just what i'll be doing is just to place the pattern on the fabric and then i cut exactly what i have on the pattern on the fabric and you can see how the cutting on the fabric goes so guys this is how the cutting goes and at that notched area remember to also notch your fabric so that you know exactly where to fold in as your fold edge so after cutting i take out the pattern and here i have the fabric and then i open it up and this is exactly what we have and then this is the two inches fold in allowance for the fold edge and remember this is the shoulder slant and then this is the armhole area and this is the body so that's it for the cutting of the front fabric so the front is set now so next i'm going to be cutting the back pattern the back fabric sorry so i place the pattern on the fabric for the back and then i cut out exactly what i have please note that i already have all my allowances imputed into the pattern so i am not adding any allowance to the fabric and then i slash open the zipper allowance for the back and coming back to the front i just want us to note that you can also use a full interfacing for your front just in case you have a very transparent fabric so you can use in an interfacing it's not a must that you just use the two fold edge allowance okay so here i have the back i have it dotted i have the facing put in place and also for the front you can see i already have the dart fixed as well as you can see this is the back fabric with the zipper already fixed so the back is set and then i get the front so that we can stitch the front and the back together so i get the front and i fold in my two inches allowance like it's already ironed out already and then i place it on the back like so remember guys i told you i told us that this is the shoulder slant and then i'm going to be stitching this shoulder slant for the front on the back i pick it up like so and then pick the back interfacing okay just watch how i pick the back interface and place it over the front uh, fabric that is we now have the front fabric in between the back main fabric and then the back interfacing this is just because i do not want to weave the shoulder stand i want it to be stitched in but if you want it weaved just place the front on the back and just go straight to the stitching machine and get it stitched and then i proceed to stitching the shoulder slant and i'm going to be doing the same thing to the other shoulders uh, to the other shoulder slant and i'm going to be showing us what it looks like by the time i am done and guys this is exactly how i want the shoulder to look like and then let me flip it over and show us what it looks like so you can see how the dripping came out very nicely so this is what the dripping looks like and at this point i will have our cowl neck ready so the next and um, almost the final um thing to do is just to stitch the two sides together using the required body measurements and after i'm done stitching the sides together guys this is what it looks like can you see our cowl dress or dripping dress is ready please note that this is a dress so i'm going to be stitching it to the lower part of the dress and guys i'm going to be showing us what the final and beautiful look looks like please do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like do not forget to share please thank you for your support as always thank you and see you in my next video bye